Welcome to another edition of the Roadrunner View. As you can see, we're still here, so that means Eric hasn't fired us yet for the 30 Minute Magazine show that features Metro State sports and their highlights from this past month. We have game-winning goals, sensational upsets, and all the updates from the world that is Roadrunner sports. Let's get started here on the Roadrunner Review. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Aragon, and that sharply dressed man right there is Kevin Hall. Before we bring you all the exciting highlights from this past month, Paula Reles has the Roadrunner news. Thanks, Peter and Kevin. It's always so great to be here with you dashing gentlemen. You make my job a lot easier. Well, Metro Staters, I have some new additions to the women's basketball team to mention. Miss Sierra Carl will join the coaching staff as an assistant for the 2012-2013 season. Carl hails from Cal Poly Pomona, where she led the Broncos to two Division II NCAA tournament appearances, including an Elite Eight showing back in 2011. That's right, Metro State fans, our Roadrunners are a part of that Elite Eight bunch in St. Joseph, Missouri. And speaking of that remarkable run in the NCAA tournament, two years back, Cassandra Breton also joins the team as assistant coach. Breton was the Central Region's most valuable player on Metro's Elite Eight team and served as a student assistant with the team last season. So head coach Tanya Javi looks to have an incredible staff heading into the new season. And finally, can't get enough of Metro State sports? Well, you need to tune in to KMetRadio.org every Tuesday for back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back coaches radio shows that feature volleyball head coach Debbie Hendricks at 11.30, men's soccer coach Ken Parsons at noon, and women's soccer coach Adrian Almaraz at 12.30. Eric Lansing, Kevin Hall, and Peter Aragon will sit down with the coaches and get their in-depth knowledge of the game and their thoughts from the past weekend. Check out KMetRadio.org for more details. Back to you guys. Thanks, Paula. You're looking beautiful as always as well. Kevin, you can also check out the podcast of The Coach Show anytime at GoMetroState.com. Yeah, it's really fun to get into the studio and really just pick the coach's brain about what happened that past weekend and what's coming up for those teams. You actually get an in-depth perception of what the coaches are like too. Well, all right, let's get to those exciting highlights and the kickoff of the show with the volleyball team who started the season ranked 10th in the nation after going 3-1 in the Grand Canyon Invitational, which including a 3-1 victory over number three Cal State San Bernardino. The Roadrunners hosted one of the most prestigious volleyball tournaments in the nation in the Colorado Premier Challenge. Eight of the top 25 teams came to Denver to outduel the best of the best of the best in Division II, including the number one team in all of the land, Concordia St. Paul. 32 errors led to the demise of Metro State in Game 1 against 14th ranked West Texas A&M. Born Quijano led the way with 15 kills, but the runners fell in straight sets. Metro looking to move on to the Silver Division with a win over the Jennies, but Central Missouri was hosting a block party at the event center, racking 11 blocks in the match. It took set 1 25-19. Roadrunners bounced back in set 2, all-conference hitter Alyssa Heath finding perfect spots on the floor for a couple of kills, and we are even at 1. After the team split the next two sets, we head to a deciding fifth set. Lefty Lauren Guiano crushes one from the right side. Metro again goes to the right side, but this time it's Delia Whitaker who throws it down. Gemignani with the serve. Nope, catches the defense snapping, but being very, very sneaky. And Metro upsets the fifth ranked team in the nation by a final of 3 to 2. So what I think it showed is a lot of heart in the fifth uh, set to, you know, just to compete to win. And, and that was what I felt like we didn't do um, in the sets that we lost. You know, we got very tentative and we didn't play to win. And so I'm, I'm really proud of them for the way that they competed in the fifth set. From the fifth ranked team in the country to the number one ranked squad, the runners carried their momentum from yesterday into set one. Whitaker on the swing throws it down at the feet of the back line. The lefty Kiana splits the two defenders for the point. Metro wins 25-22 to take set one. But it was all the Golden Bears after that. They blocked 11 Metro State attempts and the Roadrunners committed 30 attack errors to fall 3-1 in the match. Metro would sweep Albany and Christian to finish 2-2 two two in the Carl Premier Challenge. Not a bad record for such a difficult tournament, Peter, but now Coach Hendricks and the squad turned their attention to start conference play and kicked it off with a bang sweep in Shattern State and Black Hill State in back-to-back -back nights. But things would get a little bit more difficult as the team traveled to Golden for a dogfight with Colorado Mines. The Roadrunners had a tough time on the road as they committed 15 service errors, allowing the Ore Diggers to take the 3-1 win, dropping Metro to 2-1 in conference play. After a 3-1 win over Carl Christian, the runners hosted 23rd ranked Regis at the event center. Big time match to move up in those standings, 
First set action, Alyssa Heath pounding it off to defense. The junior led Metro with 18 kills. Heath again on the block. The Division I transfer recorded six solo blocks in the match. Metro takes set one, 25-19. Second set was a barn burner. Katie Klein with the kill and Regis goes up 26-25. Whitaker slams it down past the back line and Metro within one at 30-29. But it was the Rangers who tied things up at one set apiece. Klein powers it through Heath in the third set. Klein tallied 12 kills in the match. The Rangers take the third set on the throwdown by Katie McDonald, who had a great match, adding 17 kills to the team total. Metro looking to even things up in set four. Heath off McDonald, who had no chance, but Regis was too much. Four Rangers recorded double digit kill totals, and Metro falls 3 to 1 in the match. UC Colorado Springs next on the schedule. They came in with a 4 0 record in the conference. Metro had yet to lose to the Mountain Lions in the entire 17 match history, so something had to give. Get out the way, Kihano is coming through. She was big in this one. Metro grabs a 25 19 set one win. UCCS takes the second set. Nikki Kinzer from the middle. She crushed 11 kills in the match. Kinzer on the block. She was a force at the net all night long, blocking 10 Metro State attempts. UCCS goes up two sets to one. Metro not ready to die just yet. Redshirt freshman Audrey Mars fires the kill past UCCS. Then Vanessa Gemignani with authority. The rare swinging kill for the starting setter. We're heading to a fifth set. Jordan Bannock off of Kylie Hahn. UCCS up 7 to 4. Metro rallies for five straight points. Match point for the runners. And who better than Kihano, who comes through with the most important kill of her game high 19. Metro completes the comeback and ends September on a great note. Coming up on the show, our cross-country team revs up for their 2012 season. But up next, the men's soccer schedule is brutal during the month of September and doesn't get any easier. Stay tuned to find out how they fared against the nation's best. You're watching The Road to Interview. Metro State Roadrunners, one of the most successful Division II programs in the nation. Six national championships. 65 conference championships in the RMAC. 248 All-Americans. The season is almost here and admission is free for all students. Great prizes will be handed out at select games, so make sure you're in the crowd. You can also follow the Roadrunners through Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and GoMetroState.com. Get in the game and get rowdy. The Roadrunner Review is brought to you by its proud sponsors, Panorama Orthopedics and Spine Center. From sports injuries to spine injuries to total joints for arthritis, they are in your neighborhood caring for your injuries. Located at three convenient locations, Golden, Littleton, and Thornton. Thanks for coming back. We hit the pitch for our men's soccer team. Head coach Kent Parsons has a group of solid returners and a plethora of talented new faces on the squad this season. The team got off to a great start in week one, defeating their two opponents by a combined score of six to nothing. The following weekend, however, the team did drop their match versus West Texas A&M International two to one and look to get back on track the following day. So we hit their area field for the matchup against St. Martins. In the first three minutes, the corner kick is misplayed by the Saints keeper and Hughes is right there for the header and the 1-0 lead. Phoenix Skater, a player of the year, he goes left with the right foot and gives Metro a 2-0 lead. And still first half, Arubla again this time goes lefty and fires a rocket to the top corner and the runner's up 3-0. And how about one more for good measure? The keep again misplays the ball and Jeremy Brooks takes advantage and Metro crushes St. Martin's 4-1, improving their record to 3-1 on the season. I'd say coming off of yesterday's loss, we got together as a team after the game yesterday and just made sure that today would be different, that we'd show Ken that we're here to play and obviously to win an NCAA championship. So uh, I guess 4-1 victory uh, showed for itself that we came to play. The Roadrunners then took on the Rangers from Regis University to kick off conference play. This game took place at home, but it was the road team who came out firing. Regis already up 1-0. Ben Fredrickson makes it 2-0, flipping the shot by Metro Keep Shaler Thomas. The Ranger offense didn't stop there. Second half, Adam Termolin uses his noggin to beat the keep, and now this is just getting ridiculous. 
The Rangers add a fourth goal on a penalty kick and questions start to linger on where the season is going. We, we try not to give our back line a lot to deal with, but uh, when our, the way that our midfield was playing today, I mean, our midfield, I thought, was extremely poor today. Um, we couldn't maintain possession. We gave up the ball uh, too easily in, uh, in critical parts of the field. Uh, you know, four words. I mean, if you describe Metro State Soccer after this game today, it's, uh, you know, a, a team with decent skill and terrible will. Strong words from the coach and hoping to find that will in Golden against the always tough Ordiggers. Mines putting the pressure on early. Corner kick that Thomas grabs from harm's way. Next, Arubla with a shot on net, but it skips so just wide of the post. The sky is blue when we pay taxes and mine scores set piece goals against Metro State. Joe Haynes sends in the rebound past Thomas to give the home team a 1-0 lead. Hughes goes far corner post on this service, but Mainville strands all over the shot and keeps the team up by one. Second half, Metro on the corner, Lopez with the header, but the defender is right there to kick it away. Ball gets sent back in, Bicey with the shot, but sends it to 6th Avenue and the runners fall one to nothing. The Roadrunners had to rally from a 3-2 deficit to defeat the Thunderwolves of CSU Pueblo at home. Preseason Defensive Player of the Year, Andrew Mejia nets in the game winner. Now onto the colossal matchup with the defending national champions in Fort Lewis College. Skyhawks with the early chance, but Shaler Thomas played like a man possessed in this one. He punches that shot away. Thomas gets the paw on this shot to keep the game scoreless, and Thomas again using the other paw. The senior came up big with eight saves, most are ESPN worthy highlights. How about some Metro chances? Brendan Hughes on the cross. Metro gets a body on the ball. It deflects the other direction, but the keep makes an incredible save. Less than two minutes ago, Fort Lewis with a point blank shot, but it's Thomas once again on the save. We head into overtime. Metro chance. Mejia from midfield sends in the service. Hughes is right there and he beats the keep. Metro shocks the Skyhawks 1 0, and Metro picking up some confidence and three points during the RMAC season. Uh, you know, he just told us to dig deep. We'd been working, you know, as hard as we could all game, and we felt like we deserved this game. The one thing he said is, let's come out with a win. Uh, he told us before going in that it's going to be a one-goal game, and the first goal uh, decides it, and that's what it came down to. They were just combining through the midfield. They, they drop in that guy up top to bring another number in the midfield, so they outnumber us there. So they're just coming with numbers forward then. I mean, we defended well, though. Our center, our center backs did real well to get behind the ball and just stay with their marks, and then they, I mean, a couple of them hit right at me, which I'm always thankful for, but a couple of them, I mean, you just got to kind of pull out of nowhere. So, Here are the conference standings in the RMAC brought to you by the Hilton Garden Inn. Coach Barsons and the gang are tied for the fifth spot with Carroll Mesa. While there will be no rematch with Fort Lewis or Carroll Mines, there's plenty of room to climb that ladder with games against Regis, UCCS, and Carroll Mesa in October. Still ahead on the Roadrunner Review, Carissa Price is a scoring machine for the women's soccer team and she has the squad flying high in the month of September. We're coming right back. Are you a college student that needs a place to live? Are you still living with your parents and want your own space? The Regency Student Housing is perfect for you. The community offers many amenities such as a fitness center, two basketball courts, big screen amphitheater, all you can eat dining hall, bowling alley, arcade, free parking, and a shuttle to and from the Auraria campus. For more information, please call 303-477-1950 or visit our website at regencystudenthousing.com. The season never ends here at the MSBN, and sometimes we drag, so sometimes we need a kick in the butt. Rafi! Are you kidding me, Rafi? You call that a highlight tape? That's pathetic. Who taught you how to rap a chord, Babish? That's a joke. You call this a tape job? Rowdy! Are you serious? Do you call that dancing? That's terrible. The Roadrunner Review would like to thank its sponsors. Jason's Deli. Real food is fresh, higher quality, more flavorful, less processed, and naturally better tasting. Get real food at any Jason's Deli location. And the Boulder Broker Inn, a proud partner and preferred hotel for Metro State Athletics. Welcome back. We set the pace for our women's soccer team in this segment. Head coach Adrian Almarez enters her fifth season and has 10 starters returning for this campaign. One of those starters is all-conference standout Carissa Price, and Kevin Hall has more on the Super Sophomore. That's right, Peter. Carissa Price headlines our Spotlight segment this month. The Gilbert, Arizona native is nicknamed Crash for her aggressive play on the field and has stepped up her game in only her second collegiate season for the Roadrunners. 
She's already found the back of the net eight times in eight games, which included a hat trick on the road against Incarnate Word. To go along with her 16 points, the forward has come up big in the biggest of moments, recording two game-winning goals. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do it without my team. Everyone pushes me every single day in practice from the last person on our team to the very t first person. It's a whole team effort, and I wouldn't be here without them. You know, I think she's done a great job. You know, she's she's a kid that really wants it, and she wants to succeed. She wants to see Metro State, the program, succeed. Um, and, you know, I think for her, she, she puts the work in. You know, she doesn't talk about it. She just does it. And that, as a coach, you can really appreciate. And, you know, for her, I think she's getting what she's deserved. She's worked hard for it, and nothing's been given to her. Let's see if Price and the gang can kick things off on the right foot against a very tough foe in 24th-ranked Rollins University. Bad news for the runners is starting midfielder Marie Ipok broke her tibia early in the contest and will miss the rest of the season. Tess Hagenlock takes her place and makes an immediate impact, flipping the ball over the keep to put her team up one to nothing. The Tars come right back to even things up on this Brennan McKee goal, beating Metro keeper Jordan Simpkins. But guess who comes through again? Hagenlock cleans up the mess in front of the net to put Metro ahead. Then it's Price. You can't give her that much space. And a uh, bartender, top shelf please. Price ropes the ball into the net for the 3-1 lead, and the runners go on for the 4-2 win for their first victory on the season. Big game on the schedule. Metro on the road in Golden against the Carl School of Mines, and it's under the lights, which means prime time for our roadrunners. We mentioned how amazing Price was playing to start the season, but Hagenlock has been just as high, and she fires a rocket for the 1-0 lead. Diggers respond to great pass by the defense, and Anna Evans finished with her sixth goal of the season. Check out this great ball from Abby Rolfe, who finds the foot of Brandy Farley, who beats the two defenders for the 2-1 advantage. Waiting seconds, Mines with the free kick just outside the box. The initial kick was blocked, but the shot does get through. Simpkins right there as time expires, and the roadrunners hang on for the big win on the road. I think we grew a lot this week. You know, we, we were challenged last week. We didn't necessarily respond the, the best way, like I had spoken about. Um, and this week, I thought in trainings, it was fantastic. Tonight, I think that we played with a bit of confidence. We played a little bit smoother and relaxed on the ball. Um, weren't quite frantic, and, and we did what we needed to do. Very pleased with the girls tonight. Um, we definitely needed it. Um, we had a really hard week of practice. Um, we connected, I think. I don't know what we woke up. I don't know, but it's a good thing we did because we needed the win tonight. So we kind of bonded over um, just working with the ball. So I think it really worked. Um, it showed tonight. I think this is the best soccer we've played in a really long time. So The Roadrunners then took on Fort Lewis College at home. Coach Almarez has not beaten the Skyhawks in her last five tries. First half action, the road team turns over the ball to Price, puts a rip on the net, but it flies just over the crossbar. Fort Lewis in front of Metro's net. There's a shot. It's deflected, and Simpkins makes the great diving save, and we're scoreless through 45 minutes of play. On to the second frame, Becca Medina fires, goes low, but Rosso is all over it. Tied in goals in the Armac is Sam Weiss of Fort Lewis, and she crosses, finds a head, but Simpkins keeps the Skyhawks off that scoreboard. Coming down to the final minutes, Brittany Cito on the free kick, Rasso out of position, and Price makes her pay, and the Roadrunners end the five-game losing streak to the Skyhawks and grab those three very important points. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been working all week on staying higher off of my line and I just, every time they came in, just had to shut them down and on that last cross, I didn't even see the girl there and it scared me a little bit, but <laughs> came out all right. You know, just really proud of the girls, excited for the girls. You know, I told them before the game, these are the games that you really look forward to, that you remember, you know, um, and they were, our, our girls were ready to play and they were eager to get the win. Here are the standings in conference after the month of September. Metro State currently sits tied for second with Carl Mesa, with both sitting just three points behind top ranked Regis University. The Roadrunners will play both teams in October, and it should be a fun finish to the 2012 season. Time for another break here on the Roadrunner Review. We still have top plays from September still ahead, but up next we dig deep into the numbers game of our cross country teams and how they plan on taking down the RMAX finest this season. Some students come to Metro State to find their future. Others look to sharpen their current skills. In the case of David Thibodeau, it was both. Our faculty helped fuel his entrepreneurial spirit while encouraging him to pursue his personal passions. These two talents came together in Ska Brewing Company, which he co-founded in 1998 in Durango and is considered one of the top 50 up-and-coming Colorado companies. Metro State, we educate Colorado.
everything that makes your world hum is right here with Dax. Need it? Dax it. We know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. Welcome back to the Roadrunner Review. We now head back to the news desk where Paula rejoins us on the show. Hello again. In this segment, we'll take a look at our cross country team as they begin their fall season. We'll take a deeper look at some of the key figures of the Roadrunners in our It's a Numbers Game feature. First, we look at the number four, the RMAC preseason ranking for both our men's and women's cross country teams. The coaches from around the conference vote on where they think each team will finish and both squads are projected to finish fourth. Another key number is the number 19, as our men's team opened the season ranked 19th in the nation. After one of the most successful seasons in men's cross country history, the team looks to continue that trend with juniors Kirk Harvey and Kellen Fockler leading the way. And the final number is one. Senior Jesse Hecht is the lone women's returner for the 2012 season. But we trust head coach John Sussick will have the women's team ready to battle the Adam States and Western States of the world. Just hard work, I guess, is paying off. Uh, I followed the running schedule that coach gave us over the summer very strictly, so I think all that work is just kind of paying off right now. Uh, our main team goal was to make it to nationals this year and to uh, reduce the gap between top runner and the last runner. So um, we have a really strong young team. So if we don't make nationals this year, then I anticipate we will in the coming years. Um, I'm super motivated, so to say, because last year I felt how I ended track season definitely was not how I want to. So right now I'm definitely have goals that are really high for myself and for also to help this team continue success to become a actually top program in the nation. What are, what are some of those goals? Um, well, my first one is All-American. Get to nationals and break in that top 40 in the nation. But other than that, I want to be up there in our conference because our conference is the toughest conference in the nation. So I want to really be pushing to compete with the top 10 guys in our conference. So maybe really pushing to try to get in the top 20 in the nation. So let's get those highlights started as the cross country team opened up their season in Colorado Springs for the UCCS Rust Buster invite. There's our men's team getting loose before their first race and they're off. 98 runners competed in this race. Metro's top finisher was Kirk Harvey who finished fourth overall in a time of 19 minutes and one second. Red shirt freshman Michael Warbarton finished 16th and was the next finisher for Metro. Women now and 82 ladies took part in the 5K race Freshman Janelle Lynx was the first roadrunner to cross the finish line and finished fifth overall in a time of 15 minutes and 4 seconds. Freshman Maddie Jasmine and senior Bree Richards came in next finishing 30th and 43rd respectively. The following week our roadrunners took part in the Woody Greeno Nebraska Invitational in Lincoln, Nebraska. The men's team finished 10th out of 28 teams while the women's team finished 16th out of 32 teams. 16th is the highest ever finish for the women as Lynx again led the way for Metro finishing 16th. And do you want to guess where Harvey finished for the men? Come on, stay with the theme here. He finished 16th, just 20 seconds off the school record. Great start to the season for our Roadrunners, but still a long road ahead in October as Metro hosts the Metro State Invitational on October 6th and then on to the RMAC Championships on October 20th. Top play still to come. Don't you dare move too far from that screen. We do what we do. It's the women's basketball team's new motto. But what does it mean? We do what we do. It's very easy to explain. That's a very good question. Hmm. It comes from an Eastern religion that looks to the stars. I think Coach read it somewhere in the Bible. Hmm. Well, see, I think it came from the coaches may have. See, when Aristotle and Socrates meditated on the hilltop of Montezuma. I think it could be in a line of Michael Jackson's thriller. I remember it. I was standing right there. I remember it like it was yesterday, but why can't I remember it? But in Western philosophy, not knowing could be the key to life. Crop circles. We may never know what it means, but as long as they keep winning, who really cares? What was the question again? 
Down to the home stretch of the Roadrunner Review, October should be just as exciting, so get those calendars out as we bring you the top dates you need to remember. We'll start with volleyball. October 13th will feature West Division heavyweight Adam State that will take place in Alamosa. Two weeks later, Coach Hendricks and the team will get another crack at Regis University on Tuesday, October 23rd, and we know how rowdy their fans can get, so make sure you come out for that match. Men's soccer can't wait for their rematch with the Rangers and will take place on Regis' home field on October 7th. Then to the end of the season, the Roadrunners will host UC Carlos Springs at a rare field, and right now the Mountain Lions are sitting three points ahead of Metro in the standings, so playoff position will be at stake on October 28th. Time for the ladies and they'll head to Grand Junction to take on Colorado Mesa and the winner will keep pace with the Rangers in the Armac standings. And in the finale, Metro vs UC Colorado Springs and redemption will be in order as the Roadrunners will look to avenge a 3-0 loss to the Mountain Lions earlier in the season. Alright, time to bring you the top plays from the month that was September. These great plays are brought to you by Miller Coors. We jump out the blocks for cross country in play number 5. Kirk Harvey crosses the line in the 4th spot at the UCCS Rust Buster in early September. Then on the women's side, Janelle Lynx finished 5th overall as the first road runner to complete the race and she's only a freshman. Great start to her Metro career. On to play number 4 and it's the men's soccer keeper Shaler Thomas who kept the Skyhawks off that scoreboard with amazing save after save. The senior out of Bloomington, Illinois made 8 saves against Fort Lewis and helped the runners win the game 1-0. Let's move indoors for some volleyball. Lauren Quijano had a beak of a game as the sophomore pounded home 19 kills in thrilling 3-2 comeback over the then unbeaten UC Colorado Springs. She'll play a huge factor for this team to make a deep tournament run. How about a couple game winning goals to end the top plays? Men's soccer versus Fort Lewis at home. Mejia from way out drops into service right on the Melanin Hughes who directs it into the back of the net for the golden goal and the runners pull off the 1-0 win over the defending champs. And now for the top play this month, Carissa Price bobbing and weaving around the Diggers defense and she rips the shot for the game winner and how about that celebration? That girl is hyped after that gorgeous goal and hyped for the rest of the 2012 season. Those are the top plays for the month of September and as always, they are brought to you by Miller Coors. Miller Coors wants everyone to remember to drink responsibly. What an exciting start to the fall season. October should be Jets at Sterling, and remember to follow the Roadrunners on GoMetroState.com, AmericaOne.com, and KMetRadio.org. We want to thank the Auraria Media Center for giving us a great venue to shoot our show, the RMAX Showcase for all their footage, and of course to you, the audience, for tuning in. We'll see you all next month for more high-flying Metro State action. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>